Hello everyone, in this short video I've set myself a task within 3D Coat to create a hard surface design with a limited amount of reference imagery. So I'm using a separate piece of software here called Pure Ref. I highly recommend that you download it and you can chip in and just give a little bit of money to them uh, if you so wish. And it's a great piece of software just so that you can copy and paste your images onto this little mood board and you can just keep it directly on top of your screen and you can just flick through your reference. It's really handy to use. So without further ado, I have collected a couple of hard surface references and I'm going to try and piece them together to create a hard surface design. So my initial idea was to create something where it was a mobile unit that had the capabilities of at changing people's uh, manner, changing their mind, um, warping their mind. <laughs> uh, a little bit bleak, but I thought this could be a really interesting design. Uh, I've got some more military hard surface designs, um, more industrial design, and yeah, we've got a joint design here. And let's just see how we can piece this together within 3D Coat. So let's start by selecting the voxel sculpting. I'm going to select my grid and let's start with a primitive. Now I'm using a slightly older version of 3D Coat, so it might be somewhere uh, different on your panel. But if you select primitives, you should get your standard primitives right there. So let's switch this over to an orthographic view. So we don't want this in perspective. So I can select this little cube here. And let's first create in fact let's just think this one through what should i create first should i create this and then the base yeah why not let's create this first so i'm just using this as a rough guide i'm not going to do a one-to-one -one copy um, but let's just get the base done first so this section is very square and then we've got this section which i'm going to build separately and when you're modeling in 3d imagine that you're actually going to create this in real life and that's going to make it a little bit easier when you start to model because then you think right this is one piece this is a separate piece here these joints here that's going to be another separate piece so if you think that way you can kind of compartmentalize what you're going to create and you can just focus on each individual asset and then go from there so let's start with this square shape and let's use this cutoff tool we can see there's to my eye it looks like there's almost a slight kind of uh, bevel or off cut here so let's just go up to the top here and go to symmetry and then let's put a symmetry uh, let's put it across the z-axis so it's running right through the center let's press e on the keyboard with cutoff selected and select my vertex lasso and let's just create a slight cut there. Okay, that looks pretty good. This section again looks like it's a separate piece, but I want the same dimension. So instead of creating a new model, I could use something like the split tool. Okay, so split, I can press E on the keyboard and I can select my rectangular tool. And let's just split this section off here. So when you create a split, it does try to link it to that model. So here where we've got this little share move icon, we can just move this up above our layer. And now it's taken it out of that layer within the Vox tree. And now it's just totally separate. So let's go to the transform tool and just move this over slightly. There we go. Just so that we've got a nice cut line there. That's looking good. And let's go back to this model here and let's see what else we can do. Now this section, I might use something like a pose tool. So to pose, I can go to my rectangular tool and let's just make a little bit more of an indent, indent here where I've created this cut line. So I'm just going to move this in ever so slightly. Uh, and let's, in fact, let's pull it out just a little bit like so. There we go. So small little details like that, that really makes your work stand out, make it look a lot more realistic. Instead of just having all of these open shapes, just create these small little details. Like so, there we go. 
Right here we've got a little bit of a cutout and I'm going to go back into my symmetry and this time turn off the Z and I'm going to turn on the X axis instead. So let's go back into the cutoff, press E on the keyboard and then select my circular tool. And when you left click and drag, you can hold the space bar on your keyboard and that will allow you to move your selection around. So I'm going to cut around about here. If I let go of the space, now it's in place. And now I can just let go of left click and now it has cut all the way through. So I'm going to do the same on this side. And there we go, we've got our two cuts. I could have also have gone through to the uh, Y axis and down here if I pick from bounding box it will also snap to our selection but for now I'm just going to keep it the way it is. In fact let's just go back and let's do that again. Let's go back to Z, pick from bounding, sorry Y axis, pick from bounding box and let's just do that again. So this time it's going to cut through both sides. That's a little bit better because I, I forgot that this bit is our off cut so we need to make sure that we are always picking from the boundary or picking from this bound box and we can cut through across our X and Y axes right let's do the same let's remove the Y axes and let's just cut through let's just say here in fact let's remove our symmetry remove here and here. There we go. And let's go back into our pose tool and let's just pull this in slightly. Maybe just a little bit more. Now I'm doing this on the fly. I haven't prepared for this. Uh, so I'm bound to make mistakes. So you're just going to have to bear with me. But I like to do it this way. I like for you to all see my process warts and all if I make mistakes then I make mistakes it's always good to see because you know you're going to make mistakes yourself and it's good to see how to fix them when I make them so I'll make them for you okay <laughs> right so let's just use this circle at all again I'm using the space bar just to move this in place just make a bit of an indent here and let's move this up cut that through there we go Right, so there is our base. Now we've got this shape here, which I might mimic. I don't know if I'm going to have this greater design, but let's try at least to use the pose tool. I'm going to use that rectangular tool again and just bring this out. Like so. And I like how this comes up here and then falls down. So let's bring this up. If I hold control and then hold left click, then it will deselect. And now I can move the selection. So let's pull this in and scale this in with this yellow cube. Maybe not that much, maybe just a little bit and then press enter. Okay, so now we've scaled that in and let's just try one of our templates here. So if I select one of my stencils and let's just make this a lot smaller. Perhaps something like that. Have I got any other templates? I think that's possibly going to be the right one. Oh, that's quite good. Let's just test a couple. So let's try this one first and let's go to our airbrush. Press E to go back to our rectangular tool and I'm just going to make that selection again. Let's see what that looks like. That doesn't look too bad. I might layer this slightly. So let's just go back and let's select our grid again. And I might make this section this texture. And then let's try a different texture here. And let's see what that looks like. Hmm. I kind of like the simplicity of this without the greater design. So I don't think I'm going to add too much detail here. I think I might go back into this one and just zoom in just a little bit. 
and maybe just make this design here. Yep, that's the one. And let's see what else we can do here. Let's maybe go back into cut off and let's cut this down. Same with this layer. So double click all the way around. Okay. We can also split this section here, but just keep it there and duplicate it. So let me just show you that. If I go to the split tool and I go, I'm going to go back into the rectangular tool and just split this, then that's created my new layer here. If I then duplicate that, then I've got another one. So I'm just going to hold shift on this one that's already connected uh, and I'm going to bring it up to our layer and then let go. And that's just going to join that layer back together. So now I've got one totally separate from our model and I can just scale this one up like so. And I'm going to go back into my, yeah, I'm going to keep it as transform and just scale this up slightly, I think, like so. And then I can go back into cut off and I can start making the shape. So I'm just going to cut that through there. I'm going to go back into my vertex lasso and cut this down here. And I might just keep this one straight. Back to transform and just move this one up. And we can always split this again and just move this to the side just to make that seam. There we go. Okay, good. So I'm just going to go into my shaders and just change the shader, maybe something like this. Let's go back into that one. And let's change this layer. Now I'm not totally sold on this and I want it to look a little bit more sci-fi. So I might change the design just ever so slightly. I might just go back into this layer and I'm going to use the cutoff tool again. Or let's try using the transform tool. And scale this up. Then I'm going to use the cutoff because I just want to try and remove that bevel that I made or that inlay. It's getting there. Let's just transform this again. And let's do this again. So let's try. Um, what can we use? Let's maybe just go back to the pose tool. Okay, let's make this selection. And then let's pull this one in like so. Now let's have a look at that. There we go. <laughs> that looks a little bit more sci-fi. So let's see if we can just match the same shape here underneath. And double click. And then let's bring this one out slightly. There we go. 
that's looking a little bit better. I think I might just then add a little bit of an indent here, or maybe just bring this out slightly. Yeah, there we go. Let's just undo that and let's just have it just below that line. Like so, just little design choices here. Okay, and then let's go back into our Fox tree. Let's create a new layer over to primitives. And let's just bring this down and shrink this down as well. There's our new layer. And let's go to transform and let's move this one up. Let's just get the shape here. I'm going to try and do this really quickly. I want to keep this video as short as possible. Um, so let's just get from the modeling stage and then I'll jump this into something like Keyshot maybe, or I might just render this whole thing out in 3D Coat. I'm unsure yet. Let's see how this one goes. So let's just very quickly cut through this. I'm going to use the, um, the closed spine so I can make a little curve here. That was a bad one. Let's go and do that again. Yeah, that's fine. And then let's do the same here. Maybe just a slight curve here. There we go. Back to cut off. And I just love these tools. They're so easy to use. It is like handling clay as opposed to 3D modeling. It's really cool. So let's go back into transform and move this up. Maybe just shrink this down slightly. Like so. Okay, that's fine. Now the pole is actually running all the way up to the top here. So I'm just going to duplicate this and put this one directly on top and I could change the shape. They've got a slightly different shape here, which I can include. So let's just add that. So let's keep that there. Let's maybe just shrink it down a little bit. Go back into cut off and let's just create that shape. Okay, and let's continue from here. So let's create a new layer. Let's go into our primitives and let's just select uh, a cylindrical shape. And let's scale this one up. Okay, so I'm just selecting the bottom layer and then holding shift and selecting the top layer because I just want to move all of this up. <laughs> we can see this is uh, tried to move up here because this is actually attached. So let's detach that and move that back in place like so. And let's just concentrate on this shape now. So let's go into my Vox tree. Let's create a new layer. I'm going to go down to primitives and let's keep this as a cylindrical shape and let's just rotate this down. I'm holding control on my keyboard just to um, keep the constraints here and then I can just scale this one up.
then hit enter. And I'll go back into transform and just move this into place. And I just really like this shape. I like the juxtaposition between these rectangular hard surface shapes and then this circular pattern. So I want to try and mimic that within my design. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can either duplicate what you've already got here and delete within the center. So as an example, you duplicate this, you move this one out, you make it just a little bit wider and shrink this down to the size you want this pattern. You then move it through like a boolean and just hold control, left click, drag to the layer on top, and then that cuts all the way through. Or you can just go to cut off, press E on the keyboard, select the circular tool, and then select the size you want. You can hold spacebar to move it in place. And then when you're happy with it, let go and it will cut through that. So either way, it will do the exact same thing. So let's just cut right through the center here, something like that. And let's continue from here. So I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to shrink this one down. Like so, and merge these two together. Hold shift, merge to the top layer. There we go. And let's go into our pose tool. And let's do a circular pose. And I need to align to view and then move this in like so. And I could do the same for the top section here. Align to view, maybe just pull it in slightly. And this is the same technique you use to build arches as well. If you're making buildings. Just a little tip there. Let's just align to view, stretch this out, yeah, it's around about there. There we go. So let's just duplicate this and put this on the other side. And then we need to join these two together. So here we've got somebody else's design here. I'm just thinking of ways that we can make this look a little bit cooler. It's looking a little bit strange at the moment. We need this to, um, we need to change this slightly. Let's have a think. Let's just flip this around. Okay, and then let's just fill in these gaps. So let's go back into primitives and let's shrink this one down.
Okay, and let's create a wheel base. And let's just cut this off halfway. So let's just cut through here. Let's go back to our post tool. Nope. Hmm, strange, I'm unsure what's happened there. Let's just go back. Let's scale that in. When in doubt, just undo. Now, I might keep this in some way, shape, or form, but I don't think I'm going to use this as my base. I'm really not liking this design, so <laughs> I think I'm going to have to change this. So all of this, I'm just going to hide for now. Um, let's just go and hide all of this. And I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to use a slightly different technique. So I'm going to go back into my primitives, and let's just continue with this shape and let's bring this up instead and let's use a slightly different technique so I'm going to go into my carve tool and I can start to loosely carve into this so it's going to be a little bit more abstract but I'm going to just carve away at the sides here. I'm going to turn this into a little bit more of a uh, a loose concept. So I'm going to go into my symmetry. I'm going to move this down, pick from boundary. And let's go from there. So instead of being very precise, I'm going to do this a little bit more abstract. So now it's like I'm sketching in 3D instead. So let's try, let's just add something like this, add some mechanical shapes. I can hold control to cut into our model. And let's go back to our split. And let's split this off. Round about here. Let's remove this one. And we'll go back to this layer. And let's use the circular tool. Ooh, let's go back to pose. There we go. Nope. 
Back to carve. And I'm just going to duplicate this, maybe just flip this around, move this down, maybe just scale it down slightly. Move this one underneath. Let's go back into that layer that was then hidden. And I can make this one just a little bit shorter, a bit smaller. And let's just do the same thing, back to carve, and let's just carve into this very quickly. So if you go onto my ArtStation channel, you'll see that I've done the exact same technique, but with a satellite. And uh, you get some really cool results. I've just quickly gone back into this technique because I don't think the other one was working. I'm wary with time. I could probably model something more like this and then use them as feet. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to do this a little bit more abstract just to very quickly get this design complete. I don't want to bore you with a two hour long video, so let's just get this one done. All right, okay. Just add a little bit more detail. And of course, take your time with this. I'm just rushing through. Like so. And if I go to blob, then I can actually, uh, if I double click, if it will let me, <laughs> let's go back to, is it blob build? Oh, sphere, that's the one. <laughs> and then we can create these shapes here. So let's just add maybe just a couple more well-defined shapes. I'm going to switch this over to plane and let's see what this looks like. Not very good. Let's move this in. Right, and then let's very quickly make some feet for this. So let's go back into the primitives and let's just bring this one out like so.
And let's just make them a slightly different shape. So I'm just going to use that pose tool just to bring this out. Like that. And then maybe use the cutoff tool just to cut through. I'm going to go back into carve. Just turn my grid off there and then I can just maybe just carve into this a little bit. So let's make some different shapes. So here I'm just using the uh, control command and just cutting into this slightly like so. And let's just maybe go back into our pose tool, make a selection here and maybe just bring this down a little bit, scale it up, push it down. Oops. Use the cutoff. There we go. What's going to be the other way, isn't it? It's going to be this way. Yep. And then let's go into transform. I'm just duplicating these and moving them into place. And just one more. Right, so I think I'll leave it there. I could certainly spend a lot more time on this, an awful lot more time on this, uh, but I'm going to jump over to uh, Keyshot right now to render it, and we'll see what that looks like within the renderer. So let's jump over to there. Right, so now that we're in Keyshot, uh, first of all, to export this, you go to File and Export Objects and Textures. And then you can either choose to limit the, um, let's just do this live. Let's see this, uh, mass two. Once that loads, we can reduce the poly count here. I've just set this to zero. I'm keeping this as high as possible. So it's at 5 million, but you can definitely drop this one down. Um, Keep it below a million, really, for it to continue to be stable, then yeah, drop it below a million. Because as you can see, 
now that I try to close this, it's saying, do not respond, and I'm getting the white screen of death. So I'm just going to ignore that and get straight into Keyshot and let that figure it out itself. So let's go into our materials, and I'm also going to select my scene. So within Keyshot, I've got my materials on the left, and then I have my settings on the right-hand side. And I'm going to select a paint texture. I'm going to select this gray paint matte material. I can drag this over to where I've got my named model. There we go. And now that's textured the entire model. Now we can go into something like material and we can double click on our material and we can change some of our settings here. So if you want to change the color, then we can make this a little bit brighter. And we can also go into environments here and we can select one of our HDRI uh, environments. So I can move this around by holding control and left click and I can get my lighting scenario. So I think that looks pretty good. Because my settings are on the right hand side, I can select this and I can select color in the background. And I can either choose to keep it blank and I could maybe add one in Photoshop. Or I can make this black and yeah, I can have a little bit more of a, a nice presentation. Let's just bring this down. And in fact, I might finish this off in Photoshop, so I'm just going to leave this as white for now. You can go back into the scene, and if you need to change anything, then you can select your model within the scene. You can press position, move tool, and then you can rotate these if you need to. So I've just noticed that some of these feet aren't exactly on the floor. When you're happy with it, you can press the tick. So let's do the same for here. Move tool, just rotate this down, press the tick. Back to move tool and one last one. There we go. So now that's on the floor. I might even duplicate this entire model here and have it the same at the back. So I'm just going to hold shift and just click each individual model. Or is it control? Let's just make sure. Yes, control. And let's then right click and let's duplicate. And I'm going to move this to here. And it's currently floating. I would need to model um, a joist or, you know, a bracket to keep these in place. For now, I'm just going to pretend that there's something there. Like so. And you can be a little bit more abstract as well. So if I go on to Google and let's type in, uh, I don't know, uh, shuttle NASA. And let's see what images we can collect. So I'm just after some textures at the moment. I don't want any of these blue backgrounds. I'm just after the texture from the shuttle. This is quite cool. I could maybe add this. I want to add something a little bit more detailed, a little bit more abstract. So maybe shuttle um, interior maybe, or shuttle uh, factory. Let's have a look at that. This is quite nice. This one's quite interesting. So let's just use this as an example. Oh, we've got copyright all over the place. We don't want that. Uh, do, 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 do. This one's okay, but again, we've got copyrights. We could go into our settings here and we can say usage rights and we can say um, Creative Commons. That's going to remove some of the copyright there. And just after a decent texture, this is okay. Uh, even something like this. Let's just test this as an example. We can always tweak the texture. So I'm going to view the image and I'm just going to save this to my desktop. I'm going to go back into Keyshot. I'm going to go to materials and we've currently got a bunch of different materials for the entire object. So I just want to go back and make sure that this is just one material for the entire object. There we go. I can click on this material and then 
here on this little grid icon, I can select this and I'm going to go into my desktop and I'm going to load that image. Okay, so it's very abstract at the moment. I'm going to increase the width and the height. That's looking pretty cool. Let's just move this slightly. There we go. So now we're actually getting some of the details that was on that image onto our model. So I'm going to move my lighting around a little bit. And in fact, let's just experiment with some of the lighting scenarios. So that's a bit warmer. This one's going to be a lot cooler. Oh, I quite like that. That's not too bad. So here, if you wanted to add another texture, then you could just drag. In fact, they're looking really nice on those feet there. Very cool. And I quite like this pattern here. Again, I could maybe change this later. If I want to change each individual piece, so maybe these pieces look slightly different, then I could drag on a new material. So let's say I drag on this orange material here, and then maybe this one also has this orange material, like so and maybe a section just in between here has a slightly different material. I could always go back into our images and let's just try and find something slightly different. Even something like this might work. Something very abstract. We've got yellow sh shapes here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. This is where you can spend hours just trying to find the right image. <laughs> But we don't want to do that. Let's try this one. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to drag on a totally random texture onto this one. So I'm going to drag it where it's highlighted in our scene. Okay, good. I can go back into materials, select my red material, and then it's just the same process. Select the little checkerboard, select my new texture. And there we go. Let's just increase the width. See what different textures I can get out of this. I really like that yellow texture. I think I've gone too far now. So let's just bring this back. There we go. And let's just change the perspective here. Let's change this something like 34 maybe. Uh, just to flatten this one out. Um, let's just experiment with 60. Orthographic, 24. Bit more wide angle. That looks a little bit better. So here I'm just holding control left click and I'm just dragging just to move the HDRI. Let's just turn this on so we can see that effect. That one looks quite good. And then when I'm happy with that, then I can do a render of it. So let's maybe just have a slightly higher angle here and then do a render. You can also increase the brightness if you need to.
I can also add a ground reflection and I can also flatten the ground so we get a bit more of a bounce light and I can add some occlusion lighting as well. So I'm just going to pause this now and then I'm going to render this one out. So we can render by going onto the render section here. I can keep this as my 1080. Uh, let's select here. We can select our different settings. I'll keep this as 1080 and we can then name this, select where we want to render it. So I'm going to select the desktop. I'm going to call this one uh, Masto2. And then we can just go ahead and select render. You can also add to Q if you need to change some of these settings. So I'm just going to close this down. If you need to go into the lighting, it's currently set to basic. We can also increase this something like uh, product or interior. That's going to have um, a lot more detail there. But for now, I think I might just keep this on basic um, or interior looks pretty good. So let's keep it as that. And then I'll do the render and we'll come back and jump into Photoshop. Right, so now we're in Photoshop. <laughs> I've just noticed we're, we're close to an hour now, so I'm going to really try and speed this one up uh, as quick as I can. Uh, so I'm just going to go into the crop tool here, and I'm just going to crop this in. I only just want to focus on this one model here. I'm not going to add a background. I'm just going to try and make this look a little bit more presentable. So let's just change my background here to dark gray, just so I can see this a little bit better. And I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm also going to go to the rectangular tool and just add a soft gradient here. Uh, in fact, let's just test it first. Let's go to my gradient tool and I'm going to just go onto a standard gradient. And I'm just going to select black to gray, like a mid gray color. Click OK. And then let's just test this. OK, like so. And let's then just bring this down to. Let's try a lighten and let's double click this and use a blend if and on the underlying layer, I want to bring some of these lights forward again. So I don't want it to be that bright. That looks okay to me. So <laughs> I'm breezing over this, but let's actually explain that. So within blend if when I move these sliders, I can move the underlying layer uh, forward which is then going to uncover all of the light layer underneath. If you hold Alt on the keyboard, then you can actually split these and you can blend it in a little bit more, hence Blendiv. Okay, so that's just a little tip there. I have got a video on Blendiv, so be sure to check that one out on YouTube. And I'm just going to use the eraser here and just bring back some of these details on our model. So it's beginning to look a little bit washed out. So let's just bring this back just to create a stronger silhouette. All right, so I'm going to go into a new layer and I'm just going to paint out some of these details here. So I'm going to go into just a hard round basic opacity Keep this nice and simple. And I'm just holding Alt to color pick and I'm just going to paint out some of these details. And we've got our line here, which is for some reason highlighted in orange. Uh, so I'm just going to keep that a little bit more consistent and continue to paint in that orange. Maybe make it a little bit brighter as well, just so on the edge it maybe reflects just a little bit more light. And we could even have something like a, a green light. Okay, a little green LED light there. All of these little details, it looks like they kind of just get cut off. So let's pretend that there's actually a little piece underneath here, just so that that's a separate block. Um, we can keep that the same. There we go. So it's only the image, but it actually looks three dimensionals, which is quite cool. We've got some free bit of information there. So let's make this just a little bit brighter. I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool, make the selection here. And I could just go back into this layer 
and then select a brightness and contrast and then just increase the brightness here. Yeah, because the great thing about that is because it's as a mask, if I paint this in black, then I can actually paint that back out. So I could use something like a soft round brush and then just blend it in a little bit more. So it's brighter at the top and then darker at the bottom. So let's do that again on this layer. Select around this selection. And ideally, I'm going to need to <laughs> maybe create another brightness and contrast and just bring this one up. And then just mask it off. Okay, if you want it to look like this is a metal material, so it's actually bouncing the, the light off of this material, I could just use a soft brush here and add a little bit of a glow. If you add a new layer, then I could maybe even add a glow around the entire thing. So this is looking a little bit strong at the moment. But with the opacity, I can just bring that down. And now we've just got a slight glow around the entire object. Brilliant. So let's perhaps just paint into this just a little bit more. Again, I'm wary of time. I might add a cable running along here and let's make this let's make this maybe a, a dark orange cable or let's just, just keep this black for now and let's just paint this cable coming out here. And maybe it kind of curves around like so. I can then select a new layer right click and then create a clipping mask. So now anything that I paint is going to be within that layer. Okay, so I'm gonna select a soft round brush and let's maybe have this as a red cable, make this just a little bit darker. And I'm very lightly just going to paint over this layer. Like so. It's going to be a little bit brighter here. And here, just on the top side of this cable. So I can paint that in. Okay. I can then go underneath my cable and I'm gonna select a dark red and I've still got my soft brush selected and I, I, ooh, that is still a little bit too bright. Let's bring that down a little bit. There we go. With my soft brush, I'm going to paint directly underneath. And I can see that that black layer wasn't totally solid. So I might just need to go into the curves here and just bring this down just to make sure this is in fact a solid material. I've got a feeling it isn't, but let's Add our shadow underneath. And we can always go back into this if you want to add a little bit more saturation, then I can just paint that in. And if you want to add even more details, then you can just paint them in like so. So let's just do the same thing here. Maybe just add a couple of cables running down. Make sure this is on black. Let's form a strong silhouette here and make sure this is not clipping through. Maybe just have it to about here. 
and let's just add another cable. In fact, let's do this one at a time. So I'm going to create the clipping mask, label your layers as well. I'm doing this far too quickly. And let's do this one more time. So new layer here, paint the cable in black. Make sure that is a hard round brush. And once you're happy with that, you can just collapse all of this down. You don't need to keep individual layer unless you want to make some adjustments, then by all means keep it. But you don't have to, you can just collapse them. So let's add just a little bit more light here and that should just about do it. So let's just merge all of this together. So I'm going to hold shift on the top to the bottom, right click and then merge layers. And there we go. Let's just merge that down one more time. Brilliant. And, you know, we can add a lot more details here. We can continue to paint into this. For now, I'm just going to keep this the way it is. And then we will call this one a day. So let's maybe just make this one a little bit brighter at the top here. Let's make this just a little bit brighter there. I can then hold a Control, Alt, Shift, and E. And that's going to collapse our entire layer and put it directly on top. So I can do something like a filter a sharpen and a smart sharpen just so I can sharpen some of these details so we can see them a little bit more I can go into filter and I can add a noise just to blend in some of these painted elements so let's just add a noise at the amount of one and I can also add a slight lens correction here just so it looks like it's been taken with a digital camera and you get that slight distortion on the edge of your image so if I just increase the red the magenta and the blue. If I zoom in here, we can see just on the edge here, we're getting a slight magenta uh, green and, and blue distortion. And that should about do it. Let's maybe just add a slight color correction here. So I'm going to go into color balance and maybe make this just a little bit cooler. Within the midtones, within the highlights, I might just make it again just a little bit cooler like so. And if you want to add any more of a vignette or you need to perhaps go back into this layer and increase the brightness of this reflection, then I can go into my dodge tool. I can set this to highlights and I can increase the highlights or I could go into midtones and just increase that there like so. Just to make it look a little bit more reflective. And there we go. You can add a title to this. You could add a little character standing next to this. And then we can call this one complete. So take your time. This is just uh, an example of what you could do with this technique uh, going from 3D coats to Keyshot. But you can always add these textures within 3D coat. It's perfectly fine. And then we can put this within Photoshop and then just start to paint in some more of these details. So I hope you found that entire process helpful. If you want to see anything uh, similar to this, then let me know. I am going to do a lot more uh, 3D Coat videos, I think. Um, I love using the software, so I think it'll be helpful for you to just see this technique over and over again. Like I said before, <laughs> I didn't know what this was going to look like. Um, I just had some reference images and I had a brief idea in my mind what this was going to look like. It has certainly changed throughout the process of modeling this, but that's just the way it is. When you're thinking freeform and you just need to come up with something, then yeah, yeah, you, you don't really know what 
you're going to come up with until you start making it. But that's the fun of 3D modeling. Uh, I think when you're drawing, uh, it's not that you're restricted by drawing, but you can sometimes uh, create the same design over and over again. Whereas when you're 3D modeling and you create these abstract shapes, then you can come up with something totally different, something that you would never think about creating. Even just these little textures here have created a really nice design that I wouldn't have necessarily thought about if I was drawing. So jump into 3D coats, start adding these abstract shapes and put a narrative to it. Actually think about the object that you're creating, what's it going to be for, uh, and then that's it. You can just create your own concepts. Here we go, a little Wi-Fi symbol. There we go, give it some context. Brilliant. I will see you in the next video then. Take care for now. Goodbye.